Coach May, Coach over here. Uh, one of your colleagues told us that you introduced him to John Beeline in the 2005-2006 season when you were watching West Virginia and watching his teams and some of the stuff he did. Can you talk about what you learned from him and maybe some others along the way when it comes to your coaching strategy? Well, I've tried to take something from just about everyone that I've worked for, worked with, assistant coaches. You have a, you're, you're in the, the trenches with them, so you, you pick up things. But I studied Coach Beeline's teams at West Virginia extensively his son played for him, and Gansey, and all those guys, uh, and then actually worked with Darius Nichols, who's, on, who's uh, a member of one of Coach Beeline's better teams. And uh, I, I told Coach Beeline the other day, and, and he didn't remember this because he does it all the time, and, but my first week on the job at Florida Atlantic as, as a young head coach, he walked the baseline in Indianapolis, I remember like it was yesterday, and he sat down next to me and, and he said, you don't know me, and I said, well, actually I do, you're a Hall of Fame coach. <laughs> hopefully a, an employed coach in a couple of years. Uh, but he sat down and, and told me the impact that we have as coaches in college and how important it is to never waver from in, the integrity of the game, uh, from the, the responsibilities we have as head coaches. So I, I've taken a number of things from Coach Beeline. Obviously, I watched his teams here. Uh, several of the players uh, have, re have reached out, and uh, I'm excited to, to develop those relationships and uh, continue uh, building on, on what all these coaches have done here. For Dusty, Andrew Connor, Ann Arbor News, I'm live.com, nice to meet you. Uh, as far as roster building, um, in, in the short term, what was your plan for next season, given all the openings, and then long term, going to be portal, high school recruits, or, or combination? By preference, I, I enjoy younger players and having continuity, uh, building, growing together, and, and therefore, um, the, the lifelong relationships that, that I feel like I have with almost every player I've ever coached. It's modern athletics, though. The portal will be um, a valuable asset every year. Um, we'll use it. Uh, our goal has always been find the best players we can find and help them be the best they can be. Uh, so I don't have an answer. We're going to find the best players from Michigan, uh, whether it's international, uh, whether it's high school, school, junior college, portal. Um, we'll be on the hunt for the best players that fit us and uh, want, to, want to be a part of this story program. Tom? Uh, Dusty, uh, over here, Tom Crawford. Um, we had Jay Bellis on our radio show a couple years ago, and I, it stood out my mind. He said, you know, if, if you want to hire somebody in any profession, hire the student manager of a college basketball team. And I'm just curious uh, what that experience was for you in Indiana and, and working with Coach Knight. What? Played Division II basketball, ran cross country, and decided that that wasn't the best avenue for me to be a coach. And I simply wanted to be a high school coach because of the impact my high school coach, Mark Barnheiser, had on me and, and how uh, we looked at, at our coaches and wanted to be like our coaches. And I'm sitting in the video room one day at Indiana, and back at that time, you were cutting tape with an edit pad. And one of the assistant coaches asked me what I wanted to do, and I said, I want to coach. And he said, college or high school? And I said, I had no idea college was even an option. Uh, with my background, he told me what the managers before me were doing, and a light bulb went off. I started coaching uh, grassroots basketball in the summer. I started uh, traveling the country, uh, working basketball camps, and uh, dove into chasing uh, the dream of being a part of a college basketball program. But, you, you do everything, uh, and times were different then as well. There, there weren't walk-ons at Indiana, there weren't video coordinators, there weren't administrative assistants. There was a hierarchy amongst managers. So back then, as an 18 or 19 year old, you were a manager, but after that, you were doing the work of an administrator now. And so, uh, for example, my first job, the interview sounded like this. Well, the job is yours because if you can work for Coach Knight, you can work for anyone. And unless you're the village idiot, then you'll be hired in a couple of days. So. Uh, working for Coach Knight, that experience, what you learn, uh, the values, the, the preparation, the work ethic, all those things uh, ignited and, and started my career. Kellen? Coach May, this is uh, Kellen with uh, Amazing Brew. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, I was just wondering, with the ever-changing world of recruiting, uh, what your thoughts were on NIL and how you believe it will help you in your time here at Michigan? We obviously have one of the, the best alumni bases in the world. Um, and it's a university that, that really supports athletics. And um, probably over the last year, our roles and responsibilities as coaches change and evolve. Uh, 
Um, I probably spend about 25 to 30% of my time on NIL and recruiting uh, donors, uh, giving access to our program, doing anything we, we could to provide opportunities for our players. And uh, it, it is what it is. I have, I've learned to enjoy it. Um, and it's not going away. And, and I'd love for our players to be taken care of as much as possible and rewarded for the work that they did. Clayton Safety with Wolverine.com. Uh, just wondering how you're going to define success on the floor. You talked about developing young people and competing for championships, but will the Big Ten regular season championships be tournament runs? How will you define that? The late great coach Knight said, used to say regularly, if you're competing for Big Ten championships, then you're competing for a national championship. And, and our goal is to hang Big Ten championship banners, and therefore we will be competing for national championships. Oh, Jake. Jake Sanger with Mason Brew, um, in, for Coach May. In a previous interview, you discussed that in your first season at FAU, you had a 40-hour period to recruit players for, for, your, for your team. How do you think that experience really helped you coming into Michigan in this current age of the transfer portal and recruiting players in a short period of time, and, and how do you plan on attacking that for the future? Recruiting now in the portal is, is more like speed dating than the traditional recruiting. And I think it's very, very valuable to have a network people that you trust and, and they trust you and hopefully between former players and former coaches our program is going to have thousands of agents working for us when I say agents people that are going to say great things about us and want players to play for us so we're going to cast a big net we'll narrow it down we'll be very very patient because we're not going to take the wrong guys uh, because we have several spots but uh, we'll be very thorough but understand that we need to be right uh, we need to do our research in advance and uh, make sure we make very calculated decisions because there's a lot of options and they're not all great options. John? Hey, Dusty, this is John Pope here to uh, John Neal of Detroit News. I'm curious, what did you hear when you sat down with, with Warren and John Beeline from John that maybe helped reassure you that this was the right move? And I guess going forward, do you see a role for him, administrative or otherwise, with your program? To answer the first question, uh, I asked him several questions about how he was able to sustain the success that he did and, and how they built it and what their recruiting philosophy was and the, the academic uh, component and, and all those things. And uh, But more than anything else, we, we just talked basketball and, and how uh, what we thought was the best way to win here. Um, as far as role, um, like I said, I, I, I revere coaches and I see legendary coaches, I see legendary coaches here today that I'm going to stick my head and watch them practice, see how they teach. And so I revere coaches, and you have legendary coaches that have represented this institution and hung banners, absolutely. Whatever role he wants, then I'm going to embrace it because I'm, I'm going to learn from him and, and, and use that, that information. Austin? Dusty, Austin Meek with The Athletic. Can you walk through that 12-hour period after your season ends, when you're walking off the floor, uh, what happened to get you now to this Walking off the floor, um, wow, uh, a range of emotions. Uh, it, it had been such a challenging season, and I don't say that in a negative way. And, and typically when your season ends, it, it, you, you feel like you're gonna collapse. You're, you're emotionally fatigued. You're, uh, you, you're just ready for uh, the next chapter, which usually is recruiting and retention and player meetings. Um, I think it was the that night or the next morning, um, I get a text from my agent Andy, and he said, Michigan would like to meet um, in person. We have to work out some logistics, so we worked out the logistics, I think it was Saturday, Saturday, Saturday uh, evening. Uh, we got back at 1 or 2 a.m. Friday night, Saturday evening, um, drove to Fort Lauderdale and, and met with, with Ward Doug, uh, Chad at Turnkey, and Andy, myself, and uh, had a great conversation, and uh, I probably showed my hand too early because this, this this was a place that, that I wanted to be. Tony? <laughs> hey, Dustin, uh, Tony Garcia, Detroit Free Press Welcome. And sort of building on that, there were reports also that Louisville was was interested in you. Uh, I guess, well, how did, this asked question was someone asked before, but that's another storied program with, with history of why Michigan. Louisville is an unbelievable basketball school. But this was the right fit for me, my family, and it, it just felt right. And, and I'm a big feel guy, I'm a big fit guy, and from day one, this 
was one that I just thought would, would match me and, and allow me and those around me to have the, the, the highest level of success doing the way that, that we, uh, we, we enjoy doing it. Noah? Uh, Noah Kingsley for Michigan Daily for Dusty. Um, so in the past, Michigan has had a few players who have committed through the transfer portal, but then haven't been able to get through admissions. Um, what's your plan for balancing both finding the right players in the portal, but also dealing with the admissions side of that, that a school that's that prestigious? Well, I was uh, assistant coach at the University of Florida, and it was very similar. There's, there's an academic mission of a university that's never gonna change, and, and our job as coaches is to find student athletes that match uh, and value that mission as well. And sometimes it's more, uh, it's just like the, the little thing, social media takes off and, and it becomes a narrative and then it's impossible to respond to or even counter. So um, to answer your question, we'll be very thorough. We'll, we'll do our homework as much as possible and, and try to find the best guys for us. Mojo? Bob, Bob Winowski, Detroit News. Um, Dusty, you mentioned you want Michigan basketball to be enjoyable to watch. I'm interested, what are your deeper coaching principles about the game? Is it uh, offense, defense, three-point shooting, fast, or just some of the technical aspects that you preach? If we ever walk the ball off the floor, if we're not at least jogging or, or moving at a, a, a solid pace, then, then the guys will hear from me. We want it, it needs to be free-flowing. We don't want the defense to ever get set. Uh, we shoot probably too many threes. Uh, we finish at the rim. We, we play modern basketball. We, we do use analytics. We use the metrics, but we try to find the best way for us to play. And it usually is centered around what do your best players do well, and then what is everyone's uh, what 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 did the other guys bring as far as skill set, and then you mold and but fast paced, energetic guys that want to share the ball, play together. Um, all five guys are connected on both sides of the ball. They it's more like uh, jazz. Uh, they're playing off of each other, reading each other. Um, so I, I can't say we're going to shoot a ton of threes this year because I, I haven't seen our roster yet. But um, they are worth more, so we want to shoot a lot of them. And defensively, uh, we try to be a little bit different. We try to be as disruptive as we can with our personnel. But um, we've always taken a lot of pride in trying to play a little bit different than than everyone else than the group think, just so you're not preparing for us every single day uh, in your own gym. So, uh, but what it looks like uh, to the detail, I don't know yet, uh, but I do know what I want it to look like at the end of the day, and it's it's fast, there's a lot of action, uh, very very few stoppages, and uh, hopefully we're scoring a lot of points. Michael? Uh, Michael Cohen from Fox Sports. Uh, Dusty, where are you at in terms of putting your staff together, and what do you anticipate the qualities will be that you'll look for in assistant coaches if you are looking to add new people rather than bringing folks with you from FAU? Well-rounded teachers, first and foremost, that are going to put the players first. They're going to be great teammates, great teammates amongst themselves. Um, there will be a combination of, of new staff, of staffers coming with me, once again, I'm going to be very thorough and make sure the right guys are in the right spots um, for this place, for this program. Um, but I, I know that I'll be surrounded by hard workers who really, really care about the young men we're coaching. And uh, if they don't have a blast coming in every day doing it, then they're not going to they're not going to fit in well. And it's, it's the same thing with the players. If, if they don't love ball or they don't love to compete, this is probably the wrong place for them because this should be uh, the most enjoyable part of their day. Anthony, Anthony Broom, the Wolverine.com. A question for Ward. I mean, when you guys decided you were going to make a leadership change, what were some of the, the criteria or emphasis that you wanted to place on the list of candidates, and what made Dusky your top choice? Um, well, first of all, he, he mentioned speed dating. I guess that's what it felt like for uh, for me and uh, and us. But um, one of the things I was looking for uh, from the start was a uh, great leader, uh, somebody who had been uh, a proven leader, head coach, um, that I can take a look at, uh, somebody who had competed in the regular season. I mean, the one thing I know from a lot of coaches is you can win in tournaments and have a great run, but when you're consistent in the conference play, when you're seeing teams more than once, when you're seeing them over the years, that says something about the ability to coach the game, lead, motivate, do all those things. <clears throat> so 
that's that's a, what I was looking for. I, I tell you, when when we checked out and called, I, I don't know how many people we called all together to talk about Dusty and get some information. Normally, in every search I've ever conducted, you hear something that some issue arose. Somebody didn't think he handled it right. Or they didn't think they handled this student athlete right or this team right. Nothing. Everything was positive. Uh, and so as you hear that, and we started this process Friday afternoon of looking at and talking about candidates, reaching out, talking to people about who's out there, who do you suggest, who do you think should lead the program. Uh, I talked about 10 or 12 former basketball players uh, in, in trying to get their sense of who, who's out there, what do you think, what, what do we need as a program. And, uh, and so that, that's what I was looking for, great leader, great person, uh, and somebody who had that consistency uh, from being a head coach. Connor? <clears throat> Excuse me, Connor Yergert from UofMoose.com. Uh, question for Dusty. The first thing you did in Ann Arbor, what was it? When you landed? <clears throat> Back here, sorry. I think hey, we, uh, we came here while well, we were going to go to the hotel, and I said, you know what, we don't have a lot of time, but let's go ahead and go check out the facilities and, and tour campus. It's been a while since I was here. And as, you know, we walked in, and we took about eight detours so I could see the practice facility, the weight room. Uh, <laughs> So we, football stadium, so the first thing we did was come here and, and really get a, a, a tour of, of the place and, and meet all the people that were here. Ross? Ross Martin, 24-7 Sports. Um, Dusty, with NIL, kind of following up on the previous question, did you have conversations with Ward or administration about NIL, what you need? Was that a kind of conversation and questions you had before you decided to accept the position? Absolutely, and, and it was more of just where we are, where do we think we can get to, and I volunteer the information that I look at myself as a partner in, in, in that. And I'm eager to, to help and do whatever we can, but absolutely, they came up several times and uh, they're, they're ongoing. And uh, yeah, we, we, we like the direction we're going in. Sean? Sean, we're doing Detroit Free Press. Dusty, there's a, excuse me, there's an anecdote from a story that was written by you in the last couple of years where you're in practice and you're trying to teach a double team double team's not coming from the right place or at the right time, something like that. And instead of getting really, really frustrated at the moment, you kind of bite your tongue and say, I'm actually glad you made this mistake because you're not going to make it in the game. I'm curious where that comes from. How has that evolved over the years and just your sort of philosophy of teaching and connecting with players? Oh, wow. This could go in, in several directions. Usually I'll, I'll listen to podcasts, and if something really grabs me, then I'll probably start calling whoever did the podcast and uh, having conversations on the phone, and then I'll ask them if I can come and meet with them, or whatever the case. So the, the gentleman, Doug Lamoff, is on a podcast, and, and then once I start researching, I ordered probably four or five of his books, read his books, and it, it really uh, had an impact on the way I was teaching the game. And it was practice. He, these players, they don't intentionally make mistakes. Um, at the end of the day, we're simply trying to teach better and, and to get to prepare them to perform on game night better. And um, I immediately tried that, uh, that method. And usually in that situation, a player makes a mistake that you would think should be a, a very, simple, um, very simple solution to them. They usually you'd get on them and where and they drop their head and, and I tried that method and, and I was shocked because the shoulders came up, eye contact, and it, it just really resonated with that player that you know what that obviously and, and whatever it was, I watched him, he watched me, and, and so we started doing things like that more often. And that player who was a, a reserve came in the last possession in the conference tournament and, and performed that double team to perfection and we won the game. So not sure if it was cause, effect, uh, chance, ran, whatever the case, but I know his response to me and how much better I felt because he was able to learn and I didn't have to chastise him. Uh, I, I just felt like that was going to be something that, that I really was intentional about going forward. Lindsay? Lindsay Beaver, Michigan Daily. A question for Dusty. Uh, Michigan's coming off a bit of a disappointing season. 
is there any uh, plan or strategy that you have for this all season, uh, maybe creating a culture to help them bounce back? Well, culture's people. Um, we're going to try to um, create the absolute best environment for their improvement and, and have them enjoy the process of learning. Um, I'm developing relationships with the players. They're evaluating me. I'm evaluating them. Um, once they're here, it's no longer speed dating. Relationships take time. Um, I'm going to get to know them. If, if they want to be a part of the program and they, and they fit, then, then they'll be here. If not, then we'll help them with whatever's next. But uh, we have a lot of work to do with roster construction and roster development. Um, it's too early to, to be specific right now because I don't know what all of them are thinking and, and uh, things like that. Dennis, hey, welcome to Ann Arbor. Thank Dennis, you. Fifteen from Rivals. I saw a quote just, I think, yesterday where you mentioned you wanted this to be transformative, not transactional. That's been kind of code around here for you're not going to be able to get top 10 or top 25 players. What's the, are you going after the, the top players across the country? What will you say to them to get them to Michigan? Well, we'll, we'll sell, there's a lot to sell to get them here to Michigan. Um, as, as far as top 10, top 20, we're going to chase the best players we can. And typically, the best players want to get better. Our, our job is to help them improve and be the best they can be. And if they believe you can, then you're going to have a shot at it. And we're in a, an unbelievable conference uh, with everything accessible for improvement. Uh, there's no reason why we wouldn't get the best play, chase the best players in the country. Um, but we have, to, once again, we trust our eyes and we're gonna find the best players for us, but there's not gonna be a guy that is ranked this that we're gonna not go after because of that ranking. All the way in back, let's Hey, Jesse, Jacob Seuss with uh, WZZM. Uh, congratulations, but you know, just going off that, the, the couple of recruits already committed to the program who have committed to Coach Howard, have you had a chance to connect with them? And you know, what will you say to them about you know, why this is still a program they should be a part of? Well, I need to find time to, to evaluate them more and, and go see them and, and visit. We just there, there haven't been enough hours yet. Um, it, once again, it has to be the right fit for them, for us. Um, I'm excited to see them. They obviously committed to this place for a reason. And so uh, but it, it's just too early in the process to say, I have connected with them and, and there's third parties, but um, you know the, the, the recruiting landscape's changed where you, you, know, you, you have to evaluate everything and, and I'm sure they're evaluating me and us. And uh, like I said, I'm sure this week, in the next coming weeks, I'll have more, uh, more time to, to get to know them and evaluate them and, and also give them a chance to, to do their homework on, on me. We have time for a few more, uh, Isaiah. Hey, Dusty, congratulations. Isaiah Hole from Wolverine's Lair. Uh, I know it's been something of a whirlwind for you coming here, but have Michigan's got a couple really big rivalries in Michigan State and Ohio State. How, how much have you been able to kind of learn about those? What did you already know, and how, how do you attack those? You grew up in Big Ten country. You're well aware of, of the rivalries, and um, I became really, really close uh, with a few uh, guys that played football at this school down south. And uh, Chris Carter lived in the neighborhood next door and works at FAU now. So uh, yeah, I'm very, very familiar with, with the rivalries. Chris? This is Chris Ballas with Wolverine.com on three. Another one of your colleagues said a long time ago when you were a young coach, he, he called you a basketball junkie. Are you still that guy? And how do you balance that with family? And, and how does that grow if, even if you are still a joke? Well, I, I don't have a lot of hobbies. I wake up every day starving to get better. As far as junkie, uh, I don't know. That's, <laughs> that can go in a lot of different directions. But yeah, I'm obsessed with trying to become a better teacher and coach. And fortunately, uh, my family is very uh, immersed in, in my career, and they love the game and, and all that goes with it. And, and my wife's great with our players, and, and, and my sons are, are around their age. So they have a relationship with them as well. So luckily, our worlds, uh, they, they've collided with basketball and family. Go back to Michael. Uh, Dusty, as you have some more time to look at how you want to put this roster together, there are probably ways to do it that would give you a better chance of winning games early, but that may or may not mesh with the best choice of how to build the program over a couple of seasons. How are you going to balance trying to win games right away, put fans in the seats, like you said, versus doing what's best for the program over the course of a couple of seasons? I do think year one is important for putting a product on the floor that um, people want to be a part of. and. 
that means a lot of things, how the players interact with each other, the, the connection between them, the connection between them and the students and the fan base. Um, we definitely have to, I don't want to say have, you don't have to, I, I do feel that we need to put a good team on the court in, 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 from, from, from day one, in year one, and then continue to build. Um, therefore, we'll, we'll sign some high school players, we'll sign some portal players, um, but also having some continuity where you're not, it's not a roster overhaul every year. Um, but once again, it's too early, but it, there's no, there won't be a point when we just throw in the towel and say we're not gonna be competitive this year because it's year one. We, we wanna win and we want to um, be able to, to, to sell that going forward, what we were able to do in year one. Andrew, do you wanna wrap this up? Dusty, there, there are some very talented players on, on your Florida Atlantic roster. Can you, have you had any conversations with them about maybe following them here? We met as a group and several of them met individually when I left. Um, they had a range of emotions. Um, right now, um, they're focused on, on FAU and I don't think any of them are in the portal. Um, right now, I don't know. Um, I want that place to continue uh, to sustain success and I'll do everything I can to help that. But if, if any of those guys, um, it, that those those questions be asked later, I, I don't know right now. That's gonna do it. We appreciate everybody's time and welcome to Dustin May one more.